This is a big one. Eight feet, four inches long, to be exact. I found this in an alley. It's uh, an old piece of office furniture. I think this would be considered an office credenza. It is a mid-century piece, and it's in very rough shape, especially the top. There's all kinds of stains and scratches and all sorts of stuff. There are a couple of big dents right here. Here's a really deep gouge here. This was made by the Stowe and Davis Company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. You can see the label in there. I like the brass legs. Unfortunately, this hinge is broken and I don't think I'll have much luck finding a replacement for that, so might have to get all new hinges, we'll see. First thing to do is to remove the finish. There's not really much left of the finish and I tried the scraper on it. It seems to be working pretty well, so I'm just going to go with that method. The grain on this edge banding runs vertically, so I have to scrape it up and down. I got most of the finish scraped off, and there's lots of scratches and dents and all kinds of stuff on this top. Uh, so I think the next step is to sand it, and I'll sand it with some 120 grit to start with. All right, so I made one pass with the 120 grit on the sander, and there's lots of spots like this and these lines here, these dark spots and lines, those are dents. So they're low spots and the scraper just went right over them and the sander just went right over them and didn't remove the finish, which is why they appear dark. So to try to get those out, I want to steam them with a hot iron and some water um, but I'm hoping it'll work okay since it still has finish in it. Normally you'd want to remove the finish so that the water can get in there and the steam and all that. Um, but I would just rather not have to go through this whole thing and pick out all the finish from all of the little dents that are everywhere. So I'm going to give it a shot without removing the finish and see how that works. Actually, I think I will remove the finish just from this one. That shouldn't be too hard. I'm gonna use this little scraper blade to get down in there and get that finish out of there so the water and the steam can get into there, get into the wood fibers and hopefully puff them back up again. There's some really deep dents right here. These are three of the deepest. And they are coming up, at least a little bit. The iron did a pretty good job of steaming out the dents. 
but I still have a few deep ones like these two here. There used to be three here. There was another one right here, but that one uh, has lifted almost completely. So I'm just going to try and get these to raise some more, but I'm going to use this soldering iron this time. I can just get a little bit more uh, concentrated heat with this. I'm not expecting these to disappear completely, but I want to see how <clears throat> how good I can get them. It's probably as good as it's going to get. I think I'll just leave it there. So I was just taking a closer look at this door and noticed that there are these scratches that go across the grain. Uh, there's actually a, a lot of them in this one spot. And that's something that's going to be hard to get out. And actually, I probably won't be able to get them out. And this is the kind of thing that makes me wonder why I take these roadside finds home and try to save them. Because stuff like this, this kind of damage, when it's veneer like this is, that's really hard to fix. I can't just sand it out or else I'll end up just sanding right through the veneer. And it, it wouldn't be so bad if, they, if the scratches were going with the grain lines but they're going across, so they're going to be extra visible that way. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about these. might just have to leave them as they are, or I will try a little bit of sanding, and that might help. I don't know. I might try steaming them out, but if they are scratches and not dense, that's probably not going to do much. Um... Usually it's the dents that respond to the steaming. If it's a scratch where the wood fibers are actually broken or torn out, probably won't uh, be able to steam them out. So we'll see. Okay, the steaming of the dents is done on the top. And it has a bunch of uh, stains, mystery stains on, on the top dark stains. So I'm going to try some oxalic acid on it to see if that will take care of the stains. It might not because uh, I don't know what kind of stains they are, what caused them, but if they're from water then the oxalic acid might help. So it's worth a try. The oxalic acid has done its thing, and I cleaned off any excess oxalic acid and let it dry. And now, before I do anything else, I want to fill in these areas where there's chip veneer. And there's a bunch of these on the top. And instead of cutting out little pieces of veneer to fill all these chips, I'm just going to use one of these hard fill sticks. And first I'm just going to wet it down just to get the true color of the veneer. And this looks like it's going to be a pretty good match to that. Then I can just melt it in there. And I'll scrape off the excess. And 
There's a little spot right there I have to get. I think either the batteries in this iron are getting low or the wind is cooling this off too quickly because it's not staying liquid for very long. But should work. That looks pretty good. I'm going to add a couple of grain lines or a few grain lines. And I just realized that I uh, should wait to add those grain lines till after I'm done with all the sanding or else I'll just sand them off. And I'm not done with the sanding yet, so I'll put those back later. So I got the finish removed from the two base pieces and I did it just like the top, except I didn't use oxalic acid. I didn't need it. Um, but this one has an issue here this has come loose and this piece has come loose. So before I go any further, I'm going to glue those down. Just using a syringe to get the glue in there. Just going to use this strip to get these close to level so that the clamp will hit both of these pieces. These are the doors for the credenza. And I mentioned earlier that one of them, this one has some scratches, or they look like scratches. It could be dents, I'm not sure, going across the grain, right in this area. So I just want to try steaming the veneer with the iron and see if any of these marks come out. If they are dense, then they may come out with the iron. Um, if they're scratches, they probably won't, but can't hurt. So I steamed this and I sanded it with 120. And this is where those lines were, scratches. And I can see them just a little bit. That's probably as good as I'm gonna get them because this is veneer. So I can't just keep sanding and sanding and sanding till they're gone or else the veneer will be gone too. So I'll probably just leave it where it is. And hopefully I don't need to use stain on this because if the stain would make the scratches more visible because they would absorb the stain and get darker. So, so we'll see. So I'm working on the drawers here and they've got a bunch of little black spots all over the fronts. And I'm gonna try some oxalic acid to see if that will get rid of those spots. I'll speed up the footage a little bit of this spot and we can see the oxalic acid doing its thing and lightening the spot. And now it's just about completely gone. I actually can't even see where it was anymore. The top of the credenza has this really deep scratch. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do about that. And I was thinking instead of trying to disguise it and make it look like it's not there, I would instead fill it with something that actually made it stand out. Cause it's actually kind of a cool shape through there, almost like a river or a canyon. And I'm just trying to figure out now how to do that. 
my first thought was to fill it with some kind of a gold. And, but I don't have anything gold right now that I could use to fill that. Um, although I do have these hard fill sticks and I could use one of these colors, maybe even a white that might look interesting. And of course I could use one of these colors that would really kind of make it blend in more, but that's what I'm trying not to do. I want to make it stand out. So I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do, but we'll see. I've got to do something soon because it's October here in Minnesota, early October, and it's going to start getting cold pretty soon. And I work outside, so I need to finish this. Uh, I need to get the finish on it before it gets too cold to put finish on. So, time's a-wasting. So I've got a chip in the veneer on this drawer front that I need to fix before I start putting finish on. And I think I'm going to use some actual veneer to fill it, as opposed to the fill sticks that I was using earlier. Uh, for no particular reason, just to mix things up a little bit. I could have used the fill stick here too. So I've got a few different pieces of veneer to see which one matches the best. And first I have to wet this down because I want to get the uh, true color of the veneer. This is what it would look like if I put a clear finish on it and that's what I want to try to match with the veneer. So I've got three pieces here. This is a uh, peel and stick variety. So you peel this backing off and stick it down. It's got adhesive on it. This is just regular old wood veneer, wood on both sides. <clears throat> and then this is um, paper backed veneer. So it's wood veneer with uh, paper on the back. Any of them will work for this. And it's just going to come down really to the color. So, wet this down again, and wet this down, and that's definitely not a good match. Looks too dark and too brown. And let's see, this piece, uh, again, it's, it's just uh, too brown. Not enough of that amber color in it. And this one, this one's going to be the best, I think. It's not perfect, but considering that it's going to be a small piece down on the lower edge, it will probably blend in just fine. So I'll use this. So there are a few different ways you can do this, and I'm going to do it this way. Why? I don't know. It just seems like a good way to do this one. So I'm just gonna first place it over the chipped area and trying to line up some of the green lines if I can and right about there looks pretty good. And trace it around with the X-Acto knife. I don't need to go all the way through the veneer yet. I'm gonna do that with a chisel. Okay, so now I'm going to trim on those lines. And it's just a little too wide. That should work. And I'm gonna use super glue for this. I think super glue is fine for small repairs like this. I wouldn't use it on structural stuff, but it should be fine. Especially if it's gonna be a difficult thing to clamp up. 
And this way I won't need to clamp it up. Okay, so I'm going to spray the back side of this with the accelerator. Which means now I have to be quicker and make sure I get it aligned correctly the first time. Because it's going to dry really quick. Sitting a little bit proud of the surrounding veneer, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And now I need to trim off the excess, so I'm just going to cut it like this with the knife and use this as a backer so I don't tear it out. Well, and now it looks too brown. It looks too dark, too brown. Probably because when I scraped it down, I cut through the color that was on the top. So I could either take it out and do it again or try to color it. I think I'll first try to color it. So I've got some amber dye here. And I'm just going to put little drop in this lid and a drop or so of water and then I'll test that out on a piece of the veneer and I think that's let's see here It's getting there. Um, hold on. So I've got a little bit of, well, a lot of medium brown stain now, dye stain. And just put a drop and see what that does. That looks better. It's not as yellow as that other one, as just the amber dye. This is the amber dye by itself, which looked really yellow. And that's it with the brown dye. Looks better. And that's naphtha that I keep wetting it down with. It dries really quick. So I'm just going to put a little bit on here and a little bit on here. No, it still looks really yellow. Try more brown. Okay, I'm going to sand most of that off. And try it again. This is a little bit more brown. I think that looks pretty good. Still too yellow. All right, I'm gonna try a little bit of orange dye. And try it again with a little bit of orange added. Yeah, really orangey. Just wiping some of it off with water. And that might actually be good. So I felt like I was just chasing my tail trying to get the color right on this veneer repair. So I decided to put it at the approximate height that it's going to be at so that we can view it from the angle and the height that it will actually be living in the credenza. 
I think that looks fine. Time to start getting some finish on here. And I'm going to begin by just putting some shellac, clear shellac, on everything. Um, just see how it looks. Make sure there are no issues that pop up once I put the finish on. So far it looks great. So now we'll just spray some shellac over all the other parts. So I got the shellac sprayed on the top and it's dried. And now I have to do something with this really deep gouge before I put the final top coat on, which is going to be lacquer. And I couldn't find anything to fill this with. So instead I decided to use some metal leaf. This is fake gold leaf and put that in there. So it's not going to fill it. It'll just kind of be, be lined with it. But I don't know. Give it a shot. I've never used this before. So see how it looks. First thing I have to do is apply the glue. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to brush it on. So it goes on kind of milky. And then according to the instructions, when it's ready to have the leaf put on, it'll be clear. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that. Uh, I think it says about 60 minutes on here. You're supposed to leave it until it turns clear. All right, so it hasn't been an hour yet, only about a half hour, but the glue is completely clear. So I'm gonna try and put in the leaf. And it seems to be working. Just using a paintbrush here that's kind of stiff. Just trying to get all the excess off. Well, I think it came out pretty well. Certainly doesn't look worse than it did. So now on to the top coat. I gotta spray some lacquer on this. Time to put it all together. So this is where I usually say, and here it is, all finished. But it's not actually completely finished. You may remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that one of these doors had a broken hinge, this hinge right here. And it turns out that the other hinge for that door was completely missing, which I didn't realize till later. So now I only have two out of the four hinges for this side. And they're not hinges that I can just find at my local hardware store. So rather than hold up the video for another week or so, I decided just to 
end it here, and then figure out what I want to do about the hinges. And I might actually end up doing nothing and just giving it away to somebody who wants to finish the project. I don't think I can keep it. Uh, I don't have an eight foot long wall where I could put this. So this is where I'm gonna leave it. And I think it actually looks really good considering what I started with. There are some scratches on the top that I wasn't able to get out uh, without just sanding through the veneer. And of course, the spot here that I filled with the gold foil, which I think looks pretty neat. I also gave it a couple of gold teeth here. These were two really deep holes that I also put the fake gold leaf into. So that's that. Thanks for watching.